Well, happy Monday night, everybody. How are you doing over there, wherever you might be? I have an exciting project tonight, and I hope you're up for something different. Let some friends know we're here. Let's hang out together. Behind me, I have an antique desk. Antique by probably in the 20s or so. You definitely need to check out Dixie Bell's Voodoo Gel Stains because they can add a lot of depth to your project. They're great for staining. I have used them to stain tops of like natural wood, and uh, but I really like layering them on top of my projects. Keep in mind that Dixie Bell's Voodoo Gel Stains are water-based, which goes really well with the chalk mineral paint. It's not the, don't get confused with the gel stain, which is oil-based, um, but, um, oh man, I really like the Voodoo Gel Stain. Tonight, we're gonna feature at least Temptress and Denim. Oh, did I get that right? I'm sorry, Tobacco Road and Temptress, but I've got more out just in case. We might get pretty creative with them. We'll see how it goes. The other thing that I pulled out is Dixie Bell's Patina Paint Copper. I already got a smudge on there. I'm gonna use this for highlighting, almost like a faux distressing, so that'll be exciting. The base of this desk was painted with one coat of Yankee Blue. And I emphasize one coat because if you look close enough, you'll actually see brush strokes because underneath this is gray boss. I didn't bother putting two coats on there because I want to, I want to uh, embrace the brush strokes, the thinness of it, the texture or the look we're going for is somewhat of a layered, um, moody, grungy look. And if anything from this project, I really want you to take away from it some techniques that you can try in different ways on your project. So don't necessarily look at mine as the only way to go. There's so many options and uh, maybe you'll discover something new with Dixie Bell's products. That's always the fun part about what I'm doing. Uh, let me show you real quick too. This is the before photo of the desk. I am working on some videos for Dixie Bell's uh, T Dixie Bell TV series. And this will be one of the projects that I feature in there. The focus of my Dixie Bell TV series is pretty much repair, products, uh, troubleshooting, things like that. And this desk had a lot of that. One of the things I also did is I sanded the top, not shown in the picture here. And it's really lovely and smooth. I'll probably use a um, no paint gel stain on top or might even do voodoo gel stain. Whenever I have like a mahogany or red wood, uh, black, Voodoo gel stain stains it so nice. Just a tip, something to think about. You don't always have to use gel, uh, voodoo gel, uh, no paint gel stain on that. But this one needs a lot of work. I will be changing out the hardware to what I don't know yet. Sometimes I'll let the product, the project happen, and then I figure out the hardware. Some people like to plan it all out. I wing it way too much. <laughs> so I'll find some nice hardware that complements the piece when I'm done. And it's not unusual for me to find hardware like knobs and things that, and I repaint it to match the piece. So we'll see how that goes. So stay tuned for that, for the completion and the finished picks for that. All right, well, let's get into it. I want to describe a, a good amount of what I'm doing. So I'll walk through it. If you have any questions, put those in the comments. So here's how I'm going to roll. Keep in mind the Voodoo Gel Stain is water-based. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use Temptress. This is a really vivid Voodoo Gel Stain. Here, I'm holding it to the camera. It's a really vivid color unlike uh, maybe what you're going to see with some of the chalk mineral paints i'm just going to use my butcher block here butcher uh, pan one quick reminder don't forget to shake it up really good because the liquid and the chem chemicals the the pigments often separate the nice thing about these bottles too is that you can um, squeeze out just enough i never know how much to squeeze out and if you have to Take the lid off and just pour it and that works too i find oftentimes that when i'm done i can usually pour the content back in the container what i'm going to do now is have a mister bottle it's really good to keep that handy we're going to spray not required if you've done enough with voodoo gel stain you'll know you'll kind of get an idea of how much water to use but my recommendation is keep it wet you can also spray your Voodoo Gel Stain. So you might say, well, why did you paint such a dark color and then come in with such a bright one? Contrast, variety, surprise, all the good things. So 
So here I'm just getting the product on there. I am moving fairly quickly because I'm gonna wipe a lot of this off. It's not critical that it's consistent, uniform or anything like that. So just get it on there and you can decide how far around the front you wanna go. I would recommend working in small spaces first and you can see I'm putting on a decent amount of product and if it feels too dry, like it's suck, sucking it up too fast, yeah, I'm going through the product. I should have put more product on my pan. Like I said, I did this um, on the other side of red. I should have known. So let me just pour some out. If you're working with a large piece, you might want to make sure you have a, a good amount in your container. And I'm just going to keep it wet. And tonight you'll see me using the misting bottle a lot because I want a little bit of drippy. I want a little bit of movement. You do not have to do all of the wet. And you could literally paint this on and leave it, but um, because this is a thinner pigmented product, you're gonna have a thinner result. Again, I'm just misting. I don't, want it, I don't want any of this to dry, okay? I want it to be able to move around. I could use a mini brush instead of the one inch this is the one, uh, flat medium, it's not the one inch. But I do need to make a call as to how far around I wanna go and I will just stop right there. I have demonstrated this technique on different situations and you can see some of it um, on my YouTube channel as well. So we could stop right there. You could um, really wet this down and just keep misting it. And that's, I'm going to give it one quick mist. I like Dixie Bell's continuous spray. Now, I don't want a drippy, drippy look. I'm going for more of a, of a texture. And I've demonstrated this kind of technique before. Notice how the, the Voodoo Gel Stain is in the teeth, the dental floss look. I want to leave that in there. Right now, I'm creating texture and I'm also lifting. This part is optional, but can you imagine maybe a product or project you're working on where maybe a little texture would have been fun to have. You can do that with a rag, a paper towel. There's uh, several ways to do that. And depending, my, my rag is wet, but I rank, what is it, wrung it out, wrung it out, <laughs> wrung it out in the sink. So you can see how I'm lifting a lot of the paint off and then Again, another optional step. If you don't, if you want to soften that up, just come back again and wet it down. All these layering and steps are totally up to you as far as how far you want to take that. Sometimes you might see that there's a, uh, an area you want to, like maybe in the middle, you want to have less product. You could just vignette that out. I like having the product in the corners, in the crevices, the cracks. So here I'm just basically, basically lifting. Notice I'm not wiping. I don't want to wipe. If you wipe, you're going to get streaks. And I like the texture a lot more. But I'm not going to remove any of the product around the edges. So it feels a little bit more like a vignette. I don't know that light. Yeah. So you can see how it has that vignette. Do you see how on the, around the edges is a little darker? Okay. So that's uh, one layer. Let's let that dry. And I want to continue towards the front because I can't do anything with this side till it dries. I and mean, if we have to, very good chance that I may bring out my heat gun just um, so that the next step can be done. And I want it to be dry. The reason why I want it dry is I don't want to lift up any of that, that product we just did. So as fast as I'm working, you can see how we can accomplish this whole piece in not too long, you know, in just one short session. I do have a, a padded stool that uh, I believe goes with this piece. I'm just not sure, I'm not 100% sure that it would have come with like what you would see with the vanity because this is more of a desk and I would not put a, a stool, but I think the previous owners that I bought it from, that's how they were using it. So I may paint a stool that way it gives them the, the next, the purchase, the person who buys this 
the option of using it as a vanity. But I will not do this tool on camera, but you'll know how I accomplished it. You see how I'm still misting and just getting the product on there. I'll do the drawer tops and sides later on. As long as you keep this wet, it'll stay adjustable, wipeable. Just get it on there, okay? If you have to put a little extra in there because you missed a spot, that's fine. It won't we'll do. My camera is not going to let me really take you into the inside, so I'll save that for off camera, but you'll know exactly how I accomplished this product. You can, again, do this with paint, but there's something nice about the, the texture, the feel that it provides. And you can imagine if you're doing it with, with white magic, if you want to do somewhat of a wash, so you can really lighten up a piece, give it a mood. Some things that I had thought about doing was using the Big Daddy brush. But what I don't want to do necessarily on this project is I don't want to go lighter and hide all this cool look. Keep in mind that, and I'll just from experience and from doing this piece, as you do this, the paint will dry darker. So if you feel like, whoa, it's really crazy and bright, don't worry, it'll dry lighter. And if I have to, I could do a wash of Yankee Blue back over it, but right now it's really cool. So this is what we would consider a faux finish. You're not, um, you're kind of creating a mood or a style. Maybe that over time it's aged and weathered. Whether it is a, another good word, I would say. Look how fast that worked out. And you can see how the two sides are working together. Do you see how it's dripping here? Well, you can own it or tap it out. And if you don't want too much of that, just give it a tap. Now up here, you can probably see that, you can see the pooling of the liquid. That's a little much. I don't need that much, so I can come in here and just give it a light dab and, ca and catch some of that extra pulling water because that would take a while. But look at all that great te texture and character that's building up there. I think it's yummy and fantastic. So back the road. Uh, so let me just talk to you real quick. This is on this color wheel. So if you, if you look at where we are, we are in the blue greenish area. So if you go across, see if my camera will do it. If you go across the color wheel, we're gonna be in the browns and reds. So we're going to Tobacco Road, which is opposite the color wheel, which whenever you can go opposite the color wheel, it's gonna put nice surprises on the project and just has, has a happy fun dance on your, on your project. So whenever you can introduce, introduce a compliment color, it's really a nice thing. And keep in mind that the copper patina that I will be using here shortly is also a complement color. All I'm doing right now is I'm not covering all of it. What I want to do is I want to put some color. Here's my misting bottle. And I like to work wet here. This is what I consider what I typically called shading. So when you call it, when I call it shading, that basically means I'm, I'm working in the shadows of areas like you might see someone use wax. Do you see how I'm just strategically putting it in areas? So I'm actually going to push some more in there. Now this is where I would say you can use a brush like, well, let's, someone asked about a blending brush. so. Let's just use a bell brush, one of my top favorite brushes. Here, all I'm doing right now, I'm not blending. There's no paint to blend into. This is the water-based nature of the brush, of this paint is so thin that it lets me almost, you're tinting, if you will. Don't overwork it. This is the part that I'm saying is kind of like I'm grunging it a little bit. You're making it a little dirty or aged. Um, you know what? Probably even a, a great word to use, antiquing it. I'm basically antiquing. And I'm doing my best not to push the color into 
the middle of the dental okay let's move down to the bottom you can see some of my we're going to go here we got a little bit of spray down below so you see that lip right there i'm putting some underneath the lip You do not have to do a complement color, okay? Let's be clear about that. But I like what it does to the, to the color. It adds little surprises. I like the darken areas so it doesn't become so much of a focal point. I will tell you, keep in mind that because we did not thoroughly let some of this dry, that you could reactivate some of the color. Not a bad thing, but if you don't want your previous work you did during that session to get activated again, there's a chance. So I'm just looking for little areas to highlight. I'm not working right there because I think it's still a little wet. You see how I'm getting into this middle area? It's kind of cool. And then just use the bell brush or whatever brush you choose and just soften it out. Maybe you'd like to play off the corner a little bit. Maybe it got hit a lot and it's dirty. Anywhere you want to put it. Remember that I did miss, so things are still kind of wet. And then you use your blending brush. Things dry. Things will dry um, either darker. But whatever you do when you're doing this, make sure you you feather all your edges or it'll get, it'll dry with the hard edge. So we just added some depth. The crazy thing friends is look at the, look at the right side compared to the left side. It's so like almost fake. This feels very authentic, right? I mean, this is going places that has some life and energy to it. I really like that a lot. Let's bring out some patina so you, you can kind of get a good idea of the overall look. Alternates to patina. This is not a, this is not a common product that most people have sitting around. Um, so you could use gold gilding wax, gemstone mousse. You can also use, I don't know, I don't have it readily, readily open. It's probably buried away, but you can use a moonshine metallic. Now this is Gold Digger. If you follow me on his Instagram and social media, you, you would have just seen the pumpkin I posted yesterday. This is what I used. But you can use this to accomplish what we're doing. So there's at least three products. Um, I just kind of felt like my copper was screaming at me saying, hey, use me, use me. <laughs> so we're showing it some love, how about that? Do you see how that's working? Do you see the warmth that's providing? It's just so cool. I love that. And again, that's the compliment action going on. So this is patina paint copper. I'm not going to be using any spray to activate it. I just like, okay, remember? Let's go back to our color wheel. So our color that we're working tonight is very blue, but down here is where this copper's at. And that, and what I want to do is I, it's almost like a faux distressing. You see, I'm not painting it. I'm just touching. And maybe once in a while, I'll just drag it. See how I'm flattening the brush out? This is Dixie Bell's um, artist brushes, craft brushes. See, I'm just kind of touching it. Be very random about this. Don't, don't overstress any kind of perfection. Just touch it. If you want to bring attention to the center, if you want to, you could use your finger, and, but I'm trying not to. I might touch around the focal point of the, of the column, and that is the middle. Just dragging and touching it. I'm not concerned that I'm getting a high shine. All I'm worried about is adding some distressing that might have a little bit of eye-catching appeal. So looking for edges. And if you want to, you can discharge some of that and drag and just highlight see how i'm just remember again you can use copper gold uh, copper gilding wax you get somewhat of the same idea but i just thought i'd change it up tonight 
feature something that doesn't get a lot of attention and you just be creative. I did a lot of repairs on this piece. Like I said, I'm, I'm, this should appear in my upcoming Dixie Bell TV series. So if you haven't checked out Dixie Bell TV, you should do that. So simple, but the concept works really well. Just adding a little bit of life and energy. And when the lights hit it, it's just, just enough. It feels like it's almost patinaed because of the green. Maybe if I can get it to, there we go. Look at that coolness. You see how it's changing the different colors? That's really appealing to me. That, my friends, is where I'm headed with this piece. Some alternate conclusions to the matter is you could come back in there even with black magic and really darken up some lines. If you wanted to, up in smoke's a little gray, but it's gonna lighten it. I did not try denim because I felt denim was pretty much about the same value I was at, but I didn't try it. It could work, but I felt like with the Temptress and the blot and the Voodoo Gel Stain, it just felt like I needed to stop. And then adding the patina just, to me, I was like, wow, that looks great. The next thing for me, let me just show you real fast. Do you see the top? I've taped off the top. I actually painted the sides, but the veneer, the top is cleanly sanded and I will stain that. Probably a dark espresso, no paint gel stain. So that's gonna be where I'm headed with that. What do you think? Stay tuned because I think when this thing gets done, it's just gonna be, uh, it's, it's an artistic piece. It's not a, a solid finish, but I think it's got a lot of character, but the touch of the patina is gonna keep it classy. So someone needing a moody, character statement piece this will be it and i'm excited to get it done i hope you enjoyed the different techniques and and the and the, the products that i used uh i scratched the surface with what voodoo gel stain can do if you go to my boat uh, bowtie treasures facebook uh, youtube channel uh, look for things like shading uh, layering uh, look for voodoo search for voodoo gel stain in my channel You'll see a lot of different things I've done with it. Like I said, I could even stain the top with voodoo gel stain. I, I'm happy to be here in the Bowtie Treasure Studio painting and demonstrating for you. Let me know if you have any questions. Be sure to check out my social media. And there's a link in the description if you don't have a retailer in your area or you need to find one. Uh, use that link, that would be, that'd be great, I appreciate it. See you guys later, thank you so much. the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye!